Let's start again from uh, Itmar of here. Met betoch shloshim yom. We're, we're on the bottom of Kuflam Ivov. Amid Aleph, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Kuflam Ivov, Amid Aleph, on the bottom. Here we have a Machloket. Amarayim, good morning, Leah. About if the child dies before 30 days, it's his mother, Petura from Chalitza. Now, again, is she Petura from Chalitza from her brother in law, meaning is she, allowed, is she released and allowed to marry whoever she wants because she never had anything to do with the mitzvah of Yibum because she had a child and that child was considered a real child? Or, no. He was never considered a vibrant, live child, and therefore, she has a chiyuv um, to do chalitza before she marries anybody else. So itmar meit v'shtok shloshim ve'am davenit katsha. The baby died within thirty days after the father died. Ve'am davenit katsha. Okay, the father could have died uh, in the middle of the, the middle of her, you know, nine months. She got up and she was nitkadcha to another man. She thought she doesn't need yibum because she had a child, even though the child died, but she thought that was enough. Amr Avinu Mishmei de Rav, Im Eishet Yisrael, he... If she is the wife of Yisrael, meaning the new husband that she got Kedushin from. And Yisrael is allowed to marry a chalutza, a woman who had chalutza. So chaletzet, so misafek, we say maybe that child was a nafil. That's like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. And therefore, you're not so off the hook. Because maybe that we have to consider that may, that child was maybe not alive. Like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel is worried about every child before 30 days. Therefore, you go get chalitza from your brother-in-law. And then everything's fine. You go back to the person who just gave you kedushin. But, but if the new man that you met and had gave you a ring, gave her kedushin, was a Kohen, <coughs> so there's a problem. Because if she tells him, oh, before we actually have Nisuin, I have to just get Chalitza now. Then what's going to happen is, it's through the Rabbanan, that we view every Chalitza like a Grusha, even though the Torah doesn't. The Torah says only a Grusha, a divorced woman, but the Rabbanan made every Chalitza like a Grusha. If that's true, then she's going to have a problem now. She can't be able to go back to him because now she's a chalutza. Yeah? Chalutza, sorry, means the lady who is released through this process when her husband dies without any children and she wants to marry out, meaning she doesn't want to do the mitzvah of Yibum or her brother-in-law doesn't want to do the mitzvah of Yibum marrying the brother-in-law. So in order to get released from her ties to her brother-in-law because there are ties that are um, automatic. These ties are here. It's, it's like as if she already has the first part of marriage with him. But now she went to somebody else. She got a thing. So now she has to be released. How do you release? Normally you release from a marriage with a divorce contract. But chalut, chalitza is something else. Chalitza is a whole process. The Torah says that he has to put on a special leather shoe with straps and she releases that shoe. She spits on the ground. She says, he didn't want to marry me in front of a beitin. That's what chalut. And then she is released. Chalutza. Because she has a divorced woman. So the, div- the divorcing yourself off, uh, away from you, 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 you you're severing your ties to your brother-in-law is through this process called chalitza. Now, if you go through that process, you're called a chalutza. Like a woman who's divorced called a girusha. That woman, midoraita, could still marry a kohen. The Torah only says a divorced woman, not a woman that was released through chalitza. But midrabanan, chalitza is... is rendered like a grusha. And a Kohen is not allowed to marry a chalutza. That you have to know that because there are ladies today that are chalutzot. Any lady... Do still follow this uh, yeah, Yes, but we don't follow that he marries. We don't do the actual mitzvah the oraita, that he marries. But every time, but she... But that doesn't... <coughs> meaning, any lady who, sadly, her husband dies and she has no children cannot just now, this widow, just get married to whoever she wants until she receives, goes through the process of chalitza with her brother-in-law. Okay, so 
now this lady, she thought she didn't have to go through the process. Because I don't, I don't have the mitzvah of Yibam. Why not? Because I had a baby. The baby died. Yeah, but I had, the, I had him. My, son, my, fa- my husband had a child through me. So she didn't go through. And she went to a Kohen. And she received a ring from this Kohen. Now she, now she hears this halacha. That one second, that's so simple. So the problem is that she's going to go back and get a chalitza. She's not going to be able to marry the Kohen. And <clears throat> she needs one because it's a suffix nafel. Because perhaps the baby was never considered alive. So what does she do? Enacho, that's it. She doesn't need chalitza. Wow. Because that's what... Because... Because, because a child... Because it's... Um, Because um, n- nef- because it, what it, how do you know it's a navel? Because it died before thirty days. Yeah. That is a suffix navel. That doesn't mean navel. Uh, navel means you're like dead when you come when he comes out. Like uh, you uh, just. So the question is, is so Rabbi Shimon Gamliel saying if a child doesn't make it to thirty days, so that perhaps he's in like like a navel. He's not sure. Therefore, the halacha is, oh, so then why, so ain't a chalitza, she doesn't get chalitza. Why doesn't she get chalitza over here? So the answer is, because what we're saying is like this, that in order to not make her, to asura, prohibit it to her new husband, which she wants to marry, and she already got kedushin, we rely on the chachamim, who say that a child that lived, um, and then he died before thirty days. Is not a nafel, not like not even a suffix nafel. It's not a nafel at all. And according to them, the lady had a child and she didn't need chalitza, so she's going to be stuck because she's married to a kohen. Then we rely on the chachamim, even though we said the halacha is like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. We really, we really rule like the chachamim because the rule is yachid v'rabim alach k'rabim. Just what we were machmir on ourselves to go like Reb Shem and Gamliel. But if we're not able to be machmir, why not? Because it's going to ruin her marriage. She's marrying a Kohen. Then we go back to really to rely on the Chachamim because that's the true Ikar Halacha. Okay? It's a Suffolk because of the Mahlokes. Right? It's a Suffolk Nafel. Reb Gamliel holds it's a Suffolk Nafel. Uh, Chachamim holds it's, a ne- it's not a Nafel at all. So we should really rule like the Chachamim. We're machmir, like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, if we can. But here, that it will mess up her marriage, then we go back to the ruling of the Chachamim, and we say, don't get the Chalitza. Rabbi Shravi Mishmei Derova, Omer Achazu Ve'achazu Chedatis. Rabbi Shravi Mishmei Derova says, no, 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 no. We go like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Okay? Um... What do you mean, Savik de Rabbanon? A lady, a chalutza, is just not serving de Rabbanon to the coin. She's going to suffer if she's allowed or not. Yeah. So what, you're saying give her chalitza and then what? So what do you want, what, what should we do? What, what's your question? Yeah, but... She won't do chalitza. Because we, and we'll, we'll hope, we'll, we'll rely on the chachamim. You're saying even if you hold it to suffix nafil, don't do chalitza? Yeah. Even if you hold it to suffix nafil, it's a suffix nafil, it's a real suffix. How could she marry somebody with a chalitza if the baby wasn't alive? Uh, she can't marry somebody. She, that's the, the right that she has to do chalitza. Rav Shravi Mishmei Derova Omer Achazu Ve'Achazu Chedatus. Rav Shravi in the name of Rav says, No, 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 no. 
you, you don't, we don't rely on the Shita of the Chacham at all. We pass on the Shem and Gamliel. You have to actually worry that it's a Suffolk Nefel. Okay? Because we pass on the Shem and and therefore she needs Chalitza in order to marry this person. Okay, so she's going to say, sorry, I need to get Chalitza before I marry you. And then she's going to get Chalitza and then she will not be able to marry him. But you can't marry him without Chalitza. And if she gets a Chalitza, she can't marry him because now he's a Kohen. And as it did the Rabbonum. Um, now, by the way, I thought you were going to ask, place this kasha. I thought that's what you were asking before. Let's do this kasha. Ask the Moshe Mibahim. Um, for it sounds like a German city, one of the Bali Toysis. Hikshi Harav Moshe Mibahim. Vitachlot Umabakach. What did we say? That. If she's Aisha's Koyin, we're going to go like the Chachamim, according to the first Shita. We're going to, we're going to rely on the Iker Hadin as a Chacham and say, don't get Chalitza. Because Chachamim say that the baby was a good baby. So you don't need Chalitza. And if you get Chalitza now, you're going to mess yourself up. How are you going to mess yourself up? No, you're saying it's, a, it's not a real Chalitza. He says, exactly, meaning, what, what's the Kasha? If you get a if you get a chalitza and we pass a kriv shim um it's only a suffix nefil, so it's a suffix chalitza. And on the side that the baby was a good baby, this chalitza is a joke. It's just charades. You're not doing anything because you don't need chalitza. So, but if it was a real chalitza. And the halacha is that by Stafik Chalutza, once you already got married, you don't make her get divorced from a Kayan. So why not just get Chalitza? That's his kasha. That's Tais's kasha. So Chalitza is basically a divorce, and that's why the Kohen cannot get married. Exactly, because it looks, it's similar to a divorce. Exactly. The widow is fine, but no divorcee, right? That's exactly. No divorcee, and no Chalutza either, because it's similar to a divorce. Even though Midoraisa. If they're right, then you could. Because it's not a divorce. And the Torah only says, exactly. Okay, anyways, let's go right to now. So now we have a machlekes. If we pass on the Gamliel only the Chumro, right? And, but really we rely on the Chachamim. Or we pass on the Gamliel totally. At night, Rav said so. The way you just said in his name. But Litzafra, but the next morning, Hodabe, the next morning he was Choser and he said that the Eshet Kohen should not do Chalitza um, like the way that I said it in his name. Um, so therefore, you didn't hear, meaning Rav Shravya said in the name of Rava differently than Ravina said in the name of Rava. But Ravina corrected him and said, I know what, why you're saying that in the name of our Rebbe Rava. Because at night time he said it there, but I was there in the morning, you didn't hear that. And he retracted. And he said that we do rely on the Chachamim when we have to. And therefore, Eina Chaletza, she shouldn't get Chalitza. Okay? Omalei, Shritua, Yehidav, the Tishu Tarba. So if Shravi told Ravina, really? So you let this wife of the Kohen without a Chalitza? And you're over on the words of Hashim Gamliel? Because you said that we rely on the words of Chachamim? Yehi Rava, let it be the will that you should be Matir Chalev. You know what? You should also take a piece of forbidden fat, give it a heter. Now, that's a very strong line there. Okay. Basically, he's telling him, you did the wrong thing. Rabbi Yehuda Matir. Basically, he's saying it's also like Chalif. It's also like Chalif. Rabbi Yehuda Matir. Beandroigenus. If you remember, the Mishnah said, I'm going back to the Mishnah here. Rabbi Yehuda Matir Beandroigenus. We said Androigenus is a suffix. If it's a suffix zacher, suffix nekeva, therefore you're not mechalel shabbat to give him a brit. You give the brit on the, on is a is a hybrid, right? 
male, female. I forgot the name that you called it yesterday. Hermaphrodite. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, so, so you give the baby a brit, but not on Shabbat. Because perhaps it's a female. So the Gemara says, Om Rav Shizi, Om Rav Chizda, Lo Yila Kol Om Rav Yehuda and Dragon is Zohar. Rabbi Yehuda that said that your matter on Shabbat sounds like he holds, then an Andragonist has a law of a Zachar. That's why, right, you give it to him on Shabbat. So the Gemara says that if Shizzi said in Rebbe it's not for everything. Okay? It's only because he has Psukim. But in regards to other things, it's not so clear, even according to Rabbi Yehuda, that he's a Zachar. Sheimata Omerke, and we'll see in a second, Be'alachin Yerech, If a person says, Erkel Shandragon is plenty of life, the value of that Andragon should be on me, right? Yeah, so he gives to the Beit Amigdosh the system that the Torah gives. For a male this age to that age is a certain amount. Like a slave, right? Ra- what? To sell him as a slave. No, not to sell him as a slave. To give money to the Beit Amigdosh. No, but this is not the slave market. This is the system that the Torah gives. That, that would be if he said, Dmei ploini olai, the value of that man, damim. But if he says the word erech, erech means the assessment of the Torah. The assessment of the Torah, the Torah is not going with values of, of slave market, strength. It's an age bracket. If you're male, it's this. If it's female, it's that. So if a person says that, um, then the halacha should be, that you should, if you tell me that Yudah holds he's a total zakhar, then by Erchin, you should follow the system of the males, whatever the Torah says for that age male, if he says the androgynous. And you don't. So the Gemara says, How do you know that, that if you say Erech androgynous alai, you don't have to give his value of the Torah to the Beis I mean, The Shtetanyo has zakhar. The Torah there says, The Haya Erkecha has zakhar. His value of a male is the following. So the Gemara, the bright of Darshans, Azachar velotumtum veandurgenes. The fact that it says Ha Zachar, the male, which means the pointed, identified, clear male, not something that's not clear. A tumtum is one that you don't know if it's a male or a female, right? Because it's covered, it's concealed. And androgynous is both. So it's also a suffix. So it's not the male. It might be a male, but if it's not the male, because you can't identify it. And therefore, there's no erchin. If you say, uh, you see an adregist, you say, I want to give his erch to the Beit HaMikdash, you have to give zero. You don't have to give anything. So, Yochel lo yehein be'erch ish, av yehei be'erch ish. Okay. So maybe, you don't, you, 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 the adregist, since he's not an identified, clear, vadai, definite male, you don't have to give the amounts of a male, but you should give the lower amounts, at least the, mo- the, the worst case scenario is that he's a woman, so give like a lady, give, give like a isha, like a female. It says, it's an extra word. So that word, even in the cave, it needs to be a vaday. Okay? So, Therefore, there's no, there is no, um, and any a normal drasha from Torah's Kainim, from these drashot in Vayikra, who is the author of them? We know Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir. Stam Sifra Rabbi Huda. So it means that Rabbi Huda is saying that this androgynos is not a Vada Zachar. And since the law by Erchin is that you need a vada zachar and a vada nekeva. So now, doesn't Rabbi Huda over here say matter mandragonis? You give the baby a brit on Shabbat. That would seem like he's saying that the baby is definitely a zachar. So why by erchin? So you see from erchin that he's mode. Then in regards to other things, he's not a vada zachar. Ah, if he's not a vada zachar and he's a safek for erchin, and that's why you don't make erchin for him. So why by mila does Rabbi Huda say to give him a brit on Shabbat? It should be a safek, safek chibul Shabbat. The Gemara is going to ask that at the end. But first, Rav Nachman Yitzchok is going to say another raya. 
Hakoyel Ksherim Lekadish. Another raya that Rabbi Yehuda holds all over that it's a real suffix. It says everybody's allowed to place the ashes of the Paraduma into the water. Okay? Chutz Mecheri Shoyit Vekatan. Besides the Cheri Shoyit Vekatan. Rabbi Yehuda Machshu Vekatan Uposel Beishu Vandragonus. Why? Because there are psukim that he gets this from. He says a katan could place the ashes in the water to make this afer part, this mechatat. But an isha can't, and an androgynous can't. Because in regards to these halachot, an androgynous has a halacha like an isha. So we see again that a Yehuda feels that an androgynous' status might be like an isha. Shema mina. So the Gemara says, okay. So if a Yehuda has such a doubt all over the shas, so my shlomila. So why Bamila is he so sure? Mishum Dikhsiv, because he has a Pasuk. Himolachem Kol Zachar. You shall circumcise Kol Zachar every single Zachar. Which what's the word kol an extra word? Which means that even an androgynous that has Zachrut. That means his chi of milo is exactly as much as a zachar. So, basically, the way that one, the simple way of saying this is that Rabbi Huda says that when you give that baby a bris on any day of the week, including Shabbat, you, you not necessarily gave went to a baby boy's breast. That's not what he holds. You might have went to a baby girl's breast. But the Torah says that since he has a Brit to be given to, she, there's a call, call Zachar, meaning all babies that have a Zachrut, that have that organ, should have a Brit. Vadai, they should have. And therefore, he has a chiv just as much as any other baby boy. But it might be a girl. That's from Yehuda Shita. There's a special pasuk that you give it. So if you give it on Shabbat. This type of baby always has the status of an unknown. They don't never find out if it's a boy or girl. According, yes. Yeah, right. Wow, does it feel like I don't know. I don't know. This is why they say, Shira Habben Zahal Ben Zachavadai. That's funny. Um, by the way, there's another Shita Tanoim that holds he's a Zachavadai. Um, and some say that Yehuda holds he's a barrier of Atzma. He's not a Zoch, he's not of the Keva, he's an Androgynous. It's whatever, you can give that word in English. It's, an, it's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. But that thing, that new thing, that third spe- species, is, right? Is, the third gender is Chayav in Mila also. Because from this Pasuk. So therefore, why not give it, to, give it to it on Shabbat? If they make a new type of like, him, her, and... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So now, Abatai, we are on today's daf. Right now, we're on today's daf. Okay, let's go. Let's move. It's not a not hard daf. Let's let's go. Let's go. But it's a very interesting. You're gonna enjoy it very much. You ready? Someone had two babies. One baby was his Brit was today on Shabbat. Okay. What did you say? It doesn't really matter who. It doesn't really matter. The point is that there's going to be a mix-up. The one, one baby here, yeah, the Mohel, has two babies there. And the, the babies, um, one is a Shabbat Brit, and one is a Sunday Brit. Okay? 
So, meaning to say that the eighth day for one of them is on Sunday, the eighth day for one of them is on Shabbat. You took the, they took the Sunday baby and they gave the Brit on Shabbat. So that means he got his Brit on the seventh day of the week. Okay? For example, they bring down the Rishonim, a man had two wives, one gave birth like this, that's why the babies were near each other, because in the same home, whatever, fine. One gave birth on Shabbat, one gave birth on Sunday, you mix them up. Or if they were twins, depending on what time they were born, no? If they were born two minutes apart. Exactly, that could be also. Okay? Fine. So now, says the, says the Mishnah, Chayav. So is he, does he have to bring a Chatat for Chilul Shabbat? He made a Chabura on Shabbat, a mistake. He took the kid, he realized afterwards, what am I doing? So the halacha is, says the Mishnah, that even though he was busy with a, a matter of a mitzvah, it's, well, it's not a mitzvah, it's not a mitzvah, exactly. Exactly what you're saying. Since it's not considered making a mistake in a matter of a mitzvah, because there's no mitzvah. It's on the seventh day. There's absolutely no mitzvah. So even though he had great intentions, he thought he was doing a mitzvah, that's not called erring, making an error during, through a mitzvah. Because there's no mitzvah. And therefore, you didn't, you weren't, didn't fulfill any mitzvah here, and therefore you have to bring a korban chatat. After Shabbat, you have to buy yourself an animal, bring it to Beit HaMikdash, because you're in the Shabbat. But what about if Echad Lamul Okay Be'erev Shabbat Echad Lamul B'Shabbat What about one the Brit was on Friday Eighth day was Friday and the other one was Shabbat V'Shachach Umal Shal Erev Shabbat B'Shabbat And you took the one that was Erev Shabbat and you did it on Shabbat and what happened was, he got sick. The baby got sick, let's say, on Erev Shabbat. So, you can't give the Brit today. Okay? And, um, therefore, what's the halacha? You have to wait till Sunday. Because tomorrow is going to be a Mila Shalom Bizmana. And we already learned that a Mila Shalom Bizmana is not Doche Shabbat. So, you have to wait till Sunday. But you gave the Friday baby a Brit on Shabbat. So, there we have a Machlokat. But the Ezra Mechayev Chatat. even though he was involved in a mitzvah. But at the end of the day, he wasn't allowed to give this Brit because he had to wait till the ninth day, till Sunday. But Rabbi Shua Poter. Rabbi Shua says he's patur because he was making, he was ta'ab bidvar mitzvah. At the end of the day, when he gave that Brit, that it was already the time for the Brit. It was already the ninth day. Shogeg situation? This is all Shogeg. Yeah, this is a mistake. He, by mistake, gave this baby a Brit on Shabbat. So Rabbi Yeshua says, Patur. Now, you, can, you might ask, why do you need two babies over here? Why do you have to two babies? Have one baby. You're mistaken. Okay, so let the mission say, you have a baby, and you made a mistake. That's what happened. The other baby, we didn't even speak about. The other baby is like just sitting there. What are you going to do with this mission? So, just to help, just to help you make a mistake? So we'll see soon, maybe, that maybe it will become better. Okay. But Rabbi Yeshua is teaching, teaching us a new din. Although you were Mechalel Shabbat, but since you were Mechalel Shabbat in a way of a mitzvah, because at the end of the day, you were Mechayim a mitzvah. Now, you weren't allowed to be Mechayim this mitzvah. It's an Isur. It's Ichilil Shabbat. But at the end of the day, the kid got circumcised, and he got circumcised on the, at, at the time that he needs a circumcision, after the time already, so even though you, you had to wait till tomorrow, you don't bring a carbon. That is the famous machloket of Eliezer and Yeshua. So now the Gemara says like this. Rav Yehuda matni chayav. Rav Yehuda matni patur. So the beginning of the Mishnah said that if you took the baby, the Sunday baby, and you gave it to him on Shabbat, what, what do we have in our Mishnah? Chayav. So Rav Huna Matni Chayav. Rav Yehuda Matni Patur. He is actually Patur. Even though you did it on the seventh day, you're Patur. 
different gears and different texts in our Mishnah. So the Gemara says, "Rufuna Masli Chayav the Tanya Om Rabbi Shimon the Lozer Lunech Rabbi Lozer Rabbi Shua Mishoyu Lo Beit Tinokis," because we have a brayser that says like this. Rabbi Shimon the Lozer says that Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Shua don't argue about someone that had two babies. Echad Lamul B'Shabbos and Echad Lamul Achar Shabbos. B'Shua Chachumal Shal Achar Shabbos B'Shabbos. If you took the Sunday baby, you did it on Shabbat. Shu Chayav. Everyone agrees that if you did the Sunday baby, you're going to be Chayav. Alma Nechleku Al Misha Hayu Lo Shnei Tunokot. Echad Lamul Be'Erev Shabbat and Echad Lamul B'Shabbat. V'Shachachu Mal Et Shel Erev Shabbat B'Shabbat. Now, okay, what's going on is like this, that, so this is exactly like what? Like we have in our Mishnah. So far, this bright is no difference, right? The whole machloket is, if you gave the baby, but, the Shita of Rabbi Huda, okay, let me tell you what Rabbi Huda is, um, is Patur. Now, how can he be Patur? Because his girsa in the Mishnah is that the baby was, that you did on Shabbat, was a Friday baby. The case in the Mishnah was a Friday baby, that you, not a Sunday baby, it's a Friday baby that you did late, on the ninth day on Shabbat, and there... He says, everyone says patur. Which means, our safer case, which, Rabbi, which we had that Rabbi Yeshua said patur, because you didn't, and Rabbi Lezah says, you still have to bring a chatat. That was his reisha case. And he had no machloket. Even Rabbi Yezer was on board that you're patur. The safer of Rabbi, of Rabbi Yehuda's girsa was um, the case where you yeah, did the Sunday baby on Shabbat. And that's where there's a machlokes of Rabbi Yezir and Rabbi Yeshua. That Rabbi Yeshua goes so far to say that even in this case, where you did the Sunday baby on Shabbat, you're still going to be patur. Okay? Fine. let them do it. So basically, what, what, if you have to, between these two gears, what is the difference? One holds that Yeshua goes so far to say that even if you're making a mistake in a mitzvah and you're not fulfilling any mitzvah because it's too early, that's already enough to exempt you. And, and according to that opinion, Rebel Yezer for sure would agree that if you're mamish fulfilling a mitzvah, you're for sure patur. But if the, the other shita of Huna is the way we have in our Mishnah, and, that, and that, the brighter that we just brought, is no, that everyone's on board. That if you didn't actually fulfill anything, even if Yeshua is on board, you're not going to. It's for sure you bring a chatat. The only time if Yeshua says you patur is if you actually fulfilled the mitzvah. Fine. So the Gemara says they both learned it from the story in the Torah of serving idols b'shogeg because. The, the Torah over there says, Torah achat lachem la'oseh b'shagah. There should be one Torah, one law for all the people that have to bring chatat, which means when you err with a chiyu of karet, and you make a mistake, shogeg, there should all be one Torah. Where did it say that? By Avod Zara. A person, by mistake, served idols, he didn't know that it was Asur, whatever it is, so, he, so therefore all the halachot, have to be similar to that case of idols. And therefore, what, is, what happens over there? Be'ez ha-savar, k'avod ha-kachavim. Mo'avod ha-kachavim, amarach man alo ta'avid, v'chi ovid m'chayev. Ha'chanam bi'lo yishno. The Torah over there says, don't do it. Don't do avod ha-zara. Is there a difference? Is there any way that you could say, oh, here, but in this case, not. Whenever you do it, you're going to bring korban chatat. So here too, you're always chayav chatat. It doesn't matter if you're toya bedvar mitzvah, you're not toya bedvar mitzvah. Just like by the Zohar, there's no toya bedvar mitzvah there. Right? It's just, don't do it. Rabbi Yeshua, hatam to love mitzvah, hocha mitzvah. There in Avay the Zohar, there's no mitzvah. But here there is a mitzvah. And what the Torah means is, it should be like Avay the Zohar. 
Just like by Avoid the Zara, there is no mitzvah. So to any mistake of karet where there is no mitzvah, you chayav. But if there's a mitzvah and it's different than Avoid the Zara, you won't be chayav. Okay? Okay, so basically, Rabbi Yeshua is learning something out of Avodah Zarah. And Rabbi Eliezer is saying, there's nothing to learn out. But Rabbi Yehuda Matni Patur, Rabbi Yehuda actually learns it the opposite way. The Tanya, listen to this, Brayta. Omer Rabbi Meir, lo nech lakur Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yeshua, al mishahoyu lo shnei tinoikas. There's no machloket if a person had two babies. Echad l'amul b'erev Shabbat, v'echad l'amul b'al Shabbat. One was a Friday baby, one was a baby. One was a Shabbat baby. If you did the Friday baby on Shabbat, you're patur. Everyone, even Rabbi Yezder, agrees because you're doing a mitzvah. And you learn that from Avodah Zorah, right? The question is if you had a Shabbat baby, Shabbat baby and a Sunday baby. And you did the Sunday baby early. And the Rabbi Yeshua goes so far to say, Poter. And that's the way he had it, by the way, in this setup, in our Mishnah. Meaning, just like Rabbi Dezor, the Torah says, Lo Taseh. And if you did it, you have Chatas, Chatat, here too also. As long as you didn't do a mitzvah, you're going to be chayav. But Rabbi Yezer agrees that, like Rabbi Yeshua said before, in the other way, that, that since I've a desire, is not a mitzvah, but if there's a mitzvah mamash, then you're patur. But Rabbi Yeshua, hosam le tor de mitzvah, hocha tor de mitzvah. Rabbi Yeshua says, no, by the Zorah, you weren't busy with a mitzvah. That's what the Torah said. But here, you're tor de mitzvah. Meaning, one of the babies was supposed to have a, a Brit today. So you were trying to be Mekayim, that mitzvah. And because you were so busy, what did you do? You gave the baby that didn't have a mitzvah at all, a Brit. Now we know why there's two babies here. I mean, at least according to this shita. There's two babies, and no, according to all shitas, because which, even if you don't go like this, Brita, but this case is in the mission to show you, not like that, that even when you have the tid of a mitzvah. I'll explain in a second. But, that's why, that's why the Britain specifically spoke about a case of two babies. That's what I was saying, no? That it was busy. It's something that make him... Right. Like, exactly. It was Tarud the Mitzvah. But if there would have just been one baby, a Sunday baby, and you said, oh, you know what? I think the baby's supposed to have a bit today. That's not, that's not called Tarud the Mitzvah. That's right. Because you're Tarud but not Mitzvah. But here you're actually Tarud in a Mitzvah. You were preparing the, the, the Brit and the baby and everything and the, and the knife. And all that was right. The only thing is you took the wrong baby at the end. So therefore that's called Torah B'mitzvah. That's not like Avedah Zorah. And therefore you don't bring a Chatat. That's what Yeshua says. All you have to do is Torah B'mitzvah. You don't have to actually be Oisik B'mitzvah in the, in the actual Aver. So that's why there's two babies. Now we know the answer. And even though our Mish doesn't, doesn't work like Rav Yehuda, but... And, and our, mitzv- and our Mishnah says that if you did the Sunday baby, even Rabbi Shua agrees, but Hagufa, it's telling you that there's no one that agrees with this, even though he was Torud, because it was another baby. So it's telling you the opposite of Allah, but it's Tafka it's, it's in this case. <laughs> Now there's a whole third way. You ready? Rabbi Meir said, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Shua did not argue on Misha Hayyulay Shnei Tinokot, Echad Lamul Erev Shabbat, Echad Lamul B'Shabbat. B'Shachach Humal Shal Erev Shabbat, B'Shabbat Shul Chayav. Everyone agrees that if you did the Friday baby, and you did it on Shabbat, Shul Chayav is the strictest. Even though your mom is doing a mitzvah, Rabbi Yeshua agrees, Rabbi Yezer, that you're going to be chayav, even though you did a mitzvah. You gave it to him on the ninth day. What? 
you do the Sunday baby on Shabbat, the Rabbi Yeshua says Pator. So the Gemara says, what? If you did the Friday baby, how should Rabbi Yeshua say to the Kalavad Mitzvah, Poit the Reish, the Kalavad Mitzvah Mechayim? If the Friday baby you did on Shabbat, Rabbi Yeshua says Chayav, then how could he say the Sunday baby you did on Shabbat early, you're going to be Pator? What's going on over here? So the Gemara says, Ami Dibay Rabbi Yanai, Reish Kegayt Shekodam Umol, Shal Shabbat Be'erev Shabbat. The Reish case, they said Chayav from the Friday baby was that here's another reason why it's two babies in this case. You actually did the Shabbat baby on Friday. And then you did the Friday baby on Shabbat. Um, therefore you're going to be Chayav Chatat. Why? To lo nitna Shabbat lidachot. Because once you gave that Shabbat baby the Brit, there's no baby here to give, there's no baby that exists here to give the baby a Brit on Shabbat. Yeah, the Shabbat baby you already did it too early. The Friday baby is supposed to be done today on Friday, not tomorrow. So now, you're not Torah the Mitzvah. Because you have, you, this Shabbat, you should be resting. <laughs> there's nothing to do over here. And so therefore, you're going to be Chayav Chatat because you shouldn't have made that mistake. The whole excuse is you toy a bit of our mitzvah. I'm involved in a mitzvah. What mitzvah? You gave that baby the birth too early. So now that you gave the, 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 the late baby a Brit, that's not called Torah the Mitzvah. It's not called Torah, even though you're being Mekayim a Mitzvah. Okay? Seifa, however, now, what did we say in the Seifa? The Seifa of that Brighter said that you did the Sunday baby on Shabbat, there Rabbi Yeshua says, Patur, is because nitna Shabbat lidachot, because the Shabbat baby you haven't yet given a Brit to. So you by mistake take the Sunday baby. You do it early. Okay. But there Rabbi Yeshua said, that's Torah Devar Mitzvah. So Rabbi Yeshua says, no, I don't understand. Even this in the ratio, nitna Shabbat lidachot, legabe tinokot da'alma. In regards to all other babies, who cares if the ba- there was another baby here, a twin? But there's other babies that you could be thinking about that exist. What do you mean, do you mean there's no baby? So the Gemara answers what you're thinking right now. What I saw in your eyes, I think. Meaning, this, this person, this Mayel or this father, he only had two chiyuvim in here. He wasn't busy with somebody else's thing in Hialeah. So therefore for him... He's not Torah Dedvar Mitzvah any, any other way. Okay, fine. Says the Mishnah, Hakdosha. Katani Moli Shmona, Litisha. This sounds like the Mishnah in uh, Megillah, right? The Megillah test can be read, right? On the 11th, on the 12th, on the 13th, on the 14th, on the 15th. Like Pachas with the Yosef. Depending on the Kroch, right? Remember by the first Mishnah in Megillah? So this Mishnah sounds exactly like it. A baby could have his, have his Brit on the eighth day. That's the normal case. He could also have his Brit on the ninth day, on the tenth day, and on the eleventh day, and on the twelfth day. Not less than the eighth, not more than the twelfth. Which means, not that, obviously, if you don't give a Brit on the eighth, you can give a Brit on the 128th, if that's what that happened. But we mean that his proper time to have the Brit could be eighth, or ninth, or tenth, or eleventh, or twelfth. How is it possible? It says the Mishnah. Very interesting. Nimol, okay, it's a kedarka lishmona, normal baby on the eighth day. Nolad ben hashmashot nimol etisha. Right? You have a baby, Sunday night. Sunday ben hashmashot, twilight. Right? It's called twilight, right? Ben hashmashot. So it's a Suffolk yom, Suffolk lila. So if the baby was born on a Sunday, so give it to him next Sunday. The problem is, next Sunday might be the seventh day. Because maybe the twilight is considered that he was born on a Monday, so he has to do it on Monday. So now you give it to him, to be sure, that you're not giving it too early, on Monday. So we call that nine. Nine. That's nine. Nine from if, possibly nine. It doesn't mean for sure nine. It means you give it to him on the ninth day, possibly. It's possibly the ninth day, because even if he was born on Sunday, since you're not sure, you have to make sure to give it to him on the next Monday, which is the ninth day. Okay. Beinashmashot shel erev Shabbat nimola asara. 
What about if he's born on Friday by twilight, Friday afternoon? So now you're going to push it off. You're not going to give it to him Friday, so you're going to give it to the ninth day. It's going to be Shabbat. But if, in case, he's not a Shabbat Brit, because in case it was supposed to be Brit on Friday, so now it's a Mila Shalei Bizmano, now it's a ninth day Brit. You're not allowed to do is Mila Shalei Bizmano on Shabbat. So you have to do it Sunday, which is the tenth. There's your tenth baby. Mimola Asara, which means that we tell you, do it on the tenth day possibly. Now, by the way, of course, possibly it's the ninth day. Yeah. Possibly it's not the tenth. But it means that it's possibly the tenth that you get. Okay? It's for sure not the eighth. Right? Yom Tov Le'achar Shabbat. What about if you had the exact same case as before? Friday by Ben Hashmashot. So you can't give it on Shabbat, which is possibly the ninth. You have to give it to the Sunday, which is possibly the tenth. But Sunday is Yom Tov. Now, it's a meal of Shalei So you're going to have to do it to Monday. It's going to be the eleventh. Good? So the eleventh day. Possibly the eleventh. We call it, we call it eleventh, because it's possibly the eleventh. But it might be the tenth also, right? Nimola Achad Asar. That's the eleventh, right? Shnei Yom Shalei Shashon, or Nimola Shnei Mosa. But what about if Sunday is Rosh Hashanah, then Monday, by the way, this is the times when they had Aden, because today we don't have Sunday being Rosh Hashanah. No. Lo Adu Rosh. Rosh Hashanah will never be on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Not Aleph, not, not Dal, not Vav. Not Sunday, meaning the first day of Rosh Hashanah, will never be on Aleph, Dal, or Vav. Lo Adu Rosh. These things, Lo this, Adu Rosh, Lo Badu Petza, right? So, the, but in the days when they had Aden, this means, so it could be on any day of the week. So Rosh Hashanah was on Sunday and Monday, and the kid was born Friday, Ben Hashmashot. So you can't give next Friday, because maybe it's the 7th. You can't give next Shabbat, because even though it's for sure the 8th, but it might be the 9th. So it's Mila Shalei Bezmana. You can't give on Sunday, because it might be the 9th or 10th. But it's Rosh Hashanah, but it's Shmila Shalei Bezmana. You can't give on Monday, which is the 10th or 11th, because... Second day of Rosh Hashanah. Therefore, we give on the 12th, and there's a Machlekes Achreinim, so we give it on Tuesday, which is possibly the 12th. There's a Machlekes Achreinim, why the Mishra didn't say, Yom Tev Sheni Shogolius, second day in Chutz Laaretz. So I want to bring a proof that there, that type of Mila Shalei Bizmana could push off there, but others say not. We pass it not, we don't do it. And they say that it was written in Eretz Yisrael, that's why. So the only one that had two days of Rosh Hashanah was Rosh Hashanah, and two days of Yom Tov is Rosh Hashanah. Okay, fine. So it's the Gemara. Ready, Abutai? Um Says the Mishnah, Katana Chodeh En Malin Moto Achi a baby who is sick, we do not give him a brit milah until he's completely healthy. Okay? And even if the baby is not sick with sakana, he just has pain or he has a sickness, we wait to give the milah until he gets totally healthy so that he doesn't get become endangered through the milah. Because if he's a little bit sick, he can become endangered through the milah. It says the Gemara Akdosha, Amar Shmuel, Let's say the uh, the chama. The chama means the fever. Chalatzto. He left him, right? And now he has a regular temperature. We still don't give him a brit. Not nin lo kol shiva lahavrato. We wait another seven days. Okay. If the kid had a temperature. Had a fever. So we wait. So, when the Mishnah said that he has to wait until he gets healthy, that means he has to get totally healthy. You have to wait seven days. And they say that that's only if the, the whole baby was sick, the whole body. But if it's only one limb, let's say he had an eye issue, even though you push off his milah, you don't have to wait seven days. Okay? So the Gemara says, 
do we have to wait seven days, eight to eight, which means 24 hours times seven? Now, let's say the baby got sick at a certain time. It got better at a certain time. So then you wait seven days from that moment or not. Or maybe just like the Brit itself doesn't have to be. So the Gemara says, the Tony Luda. A Chacham, whose name is Luda, Torna Brayta, Yom Avra Ato, Kiyomi Voto. The day of his health is like the day of his birth. Just like the day of the birth we count. And we don't count Me'et Le'et for the Brit. So too, for the, for the health too. My love, my Yomi Voto, Lobi Inu Me'et Le'et, Av Yom Avra Ato, Lobi Inu Me'et Le'et. It means, that's what it means, right? The kid was born Sunday right before uh, Shkia. You can give him the next Sunday morning, right in the morning, right when the sun comes out. Even though he had much less than seven may eight le eight, right? He only had about six. Six days. So the Gemara says, no, that's not what it means. That's not what the Brighton means. It could mean like this. Adif yom havra atom yom havado. Di ilu yom havado lo be inam eight le eight. Vi ilu yom havato be inam eight le eight. All the Brighton was trying to say is that you have to wait ki yom hivoldo then you have to wait seven days. <laughs> you have to wait another seven days just like you have to wait another seven days to give a Brit. But it didn't mean that you should that's all it means. You have to, it just means the din of Shmuel. Shmuel said you have to wait seven days. You can't just say oh the baby's better let's give him the Brit. But, but, it, but, um, but how you, when, when do you give him the Brit? Maybe you have to wait May 8th late. You have to actually wait May 8th late. Um, the Rosh says, because since the Gemara doesn't have a Psak, you should wait because of Safek Nefashot. You should wait May 8th late. Um, the Rif also says, that, that, that actually the Shiloh was Paskin, and that is the Halochen Shulchan Aruch. You have to wait in the 8 to 8. You can't just say, oh, it's seven days. If the baby started getting better at 10 o'clock, you have to wait 10 o'clock. And if it turns into night, so then you have to wait till the next day. Okay. Eluhein Tzitzin Ha'me'akvinis Amilo. These are the strands that if they're left over from the Arlo, after the Milo, they're called Tzitzin, like Tzitzit, and they are ma'akev. They are essential for the meal. If you don't do them, and you don't cut them off, then you, the, the baby is not circumcised mahul. And what is it? It's basar chofeh et rov Which means the crown, the top part of the gid. So any or, any basar, that covers most of the atara, if you have that amount, okay, it's as if he didn't get, it was not mahul. If you have enough foreskin that can cover most of the top of the gid, okay? Now, what is the, considered the top? So Rashi says the top is considered from wherever it, from after the top, it starts to mishapeh, to slope down. It slopes downwards. So the part on top of that is called the atara. And if you have enough skin that can cover that part, then it's ki'ilu lo mal, the eno ochel If he's a kohen, and you have that, okay, the guy did a nice brit, but yeah, there's strands over there that the strands actually would cover most of the top part. The kid has no milah. And he's, an, he's called an arel. Okay? And therefore, if he's called an arel, if he's a kohen, he cannot eat truma. Vimaya bal basar. If he was a very heavy child, right? He carried a lot of basar, fat. So even though they had the best Brit, but it still looks like all the other fat comes around and surrounds it, and it looks like the child has Arlo. Mitakno mitte You fix it up because of Maritai. Okay, that's what you should do during the Brit. 
That's the din. That we don't want people to think that the child doesn't have a bit. Now, even though Avram Avinu didn't get this, this tzivui, um, we learned this tzivui from Sukim in Yehoshua. Some say it's Halach Lamoish Mistinai. But Avram Avinu did not have this chiv, maybe he did it also. Is the, there's, two really, there's two parts to the Arla. The foreskin has the foreskin, and then afterwards it's like a membrane that's left on the thing. So there's a din, you have to cut that membrane and then peel it back so that it all the way down to the edge, so that it doesn't grow back up and, and look like the child doesn't have a milah. But if you did milah and you didn't do pri'a, pri'a is pulling back, ki'ilu mol, it's as if he's an oral completely and he's asur truma. And the Rishonim say, the Rabbi Yonata says, that even if you let go on Shabbat and you walked away, Pirish, right? You have to go back and do Priya. And if you don't do Priya on Shabbat and you just do the Milah, he's Chayav Chatat. Because you didn't do a Milah. All you did is Chaburah. What do you mean? I did Brit Milah. Yeah, but you didn't do the Priya. So it's Ki'ilu Adlai Mal. So you didn't do the Mitzvah Milah. So you bring Chayav Chatat according to Rabbi Yonatan. Omer Rabbi Avinu, Omer Rabbi Yirmiyo, Omer Rabbi Omer Rav, Basara Chofet Rov Gova Shalatara. When it says most of the atara, most of the crown on the top, he doesn't mean the circumference of the crown. Right? From this point around. It means the height. Which means even a one little part of the circumference, one little strip, but you have a strand that can cover most of the height of the top part, from the lowest part of the top part to the highest part, that's also Ma'akiv the Mila. Okay? The Ima Yabal boss, if he was fat, so what do you do? You have to take it off. Omer Shmuel, Katana Mr. Balbavasar. A baby who is filled with layers of fat. And after you give him a Brit Mila, it looks like it's covering the Gid. Ro'ino to, Kozman, what you do is you look at him like this. Kozman, Shemit Kashe. When the Gid becomes hardened, Shemit Kashe, Venire Mahul, and it looks like he has, meaning, once the baby has kishui ha'ever, then sometimes everything's clear. Ah, this baby has a Brit. Right? Because you see it clearly, right? So if it looks like that, ain't not lamu. Then you don't have to give him a Brit vila. You don't have to take off those parts. The in love, but if even after he has kishui ha'ever, it doesn't look mahul, tzarich lamu. Okay? Now, it's a big shail of what Shmuel is saying differently than our, our, the, our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said that you have to take a balbosser. Shmuel read the Mishnah, right? He came, to Shir, he came to Shir to say the same thing as the Mishnah. He said, Kotan of Surah Bavasar, right? So, 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 he, oh, so what, he's just, just qualifying exactly what's considered, what's not considered, maybe. But the problem is, um, some say that our Mishnah no, the problem is they ask that over here it says Tzorich sounds like it's a real Din our Mishnah is saying Din of Mila Din of Maritain we don't people, people to think Shmuel makes it sound like Tzorich like it has to do with Mila so some want to say that Pshat like this, that the Mishnah is saying like this, if you're in the middle of the Brit Milah, the Mishnah is talking about in the middle of the Brit Milah, even if you cut enough away that when the kid's going to have Kishu Ever, he will look Mahul, but because of Marit Ayin, you have to continue and do, take off more. But if the baby already had the Brit and you didn't take that off, then you already apply Shmuel's halachas. Then, if he's going to be Bikishu, he's going to look fine, then you don't have to do anything. That's how someone to say the, the difference. We take a look at him. That's what we said in the Mishnah. 
Okay, same thing like Shmuel in this Brighton. But there's a little bit of a difference. Because Shmuel said that if he looks, when he has Kishu Eva, he looks Mahul, you don't have to give him a Milah. But the Brighton spoke more in the negative fashion. It said, if he doesn't look mahul when he's mitkasheh, the einon ire mahul tzarich lemolo. My beinayu, what's the difference? Ika beinayu. Let's say, again, Shmuel said, if he's mitkashe and he looks mahul, positively, Shmuel spoke in a positive way. If he looks mahul, then he's good. If he doesn't, then you have to give me la. But Rabbi, Rabbi Gavshim Yalil said, if he's mitkashe and he doesn't look mahul, you have to. The in love, as we mean love. If not, if not, then he doesn't look well, meaning he looks mahul. So then you're fine. But he spoke in a negative way. So what's the difference between these two languages? The Gemara picked up on that difference, says the Gemara, it can be now in nirav ve'inu nirav. Let's say, when he's mitkasheh, it looks kind of a little bit mahul, but a little bit not mahul. So according to Shmuel, you have to give him a milah. Because Shmuel says, calls man shu mitkasheh v'nir'eh mahul. He has to say, positively, definitely be identified as Mahul, not like wishy-washy, iffy. But according to the Brayta, you don't have to. Because it says, in love, as long as it's not, Mahul. As long as it's not, not looking bad. So as long as it's iffy, it's also okay. If he did a Brit Milah, he didn't do Priya, it's as if he didn't do any Milah. Now the Gemara says, Tanur Rabbanan Hamal Omer. The one who gives the Brit says, okay, before he does the Milah, Asher Kedishanu Mitzvotav Tzivanu Ala Milah. Avi Aben Omer, Asher Kedishanu Mitzvotav Tzivanu Lechnisov Vivito Shal Abraham Avinu. Now what is he doing? Why are there two brachot? If you look, now there's a machlok at this second bracha that the father makes, is a bracha of a mitzvah, pichat a mitzvah, like before you do any mitzvah, like lulav, shofar, tzitzit, Filin, Mila, the father makes one. Or it's a Birkat Hashemach. He's praising Hashem that he gave us this Brit, this mitzvah. But the, really, the, the, the bracha on the mitzvah was already said by the Mohel because he's doing it, and he's your shliach, and he's doing it. So if you learn that it's a Birkat Hashemach, fine. So they were mitaken, a Birkat Hashemach, such a great mitzvah, you have to praise Hashem. But if it's a Birkat mitzvah, so it's a very interesting thing, why are the two brachot are there? Two brikot mitzvot. The Mayel already made it for you. He made the brikot. No, another brikot mitzvah. What is that? That's how. That's what the Mefarshim ask over here. Um, so some want to say that goes to my meaning that is a mitzvah. Is it one bracha is a general bracha v'tzivanu ala milo because the whole class has to make sure this kid gets a milo if father didn't do it and if the bezin didn't do it so there's a mitzvah klalit on the everybody then there's a special bracha for the father because he has a bracha he has a mitzvah of being a father that's why he makes it okay now there's a whole shaila what you, what you do if there's no father there do you make this bracha and the opposite, Krishail also. Let's say the father is the male. Does he make two brachas? Okay. There's another question. Does he make a Shekhyanu? So the Svar didn't make Shekhyanu even in Chutz Aret. The Ashkenazim don't make a Shekhyanu. In Eretzol, even the Ashkenazim make a Shekhyanu. But we don't make a Shekhyanu. I never made a Shekhyanu. Maybe the first child I made? I don't think so. But the Svar didn't make by everyone. By every child. By every boy. Okay. So, So Shmuel says, 
Yitzchak Avinu, which is called Asher Hafta at Yitzchak. And from his mother's stomach already he became Chuyav in Milah. Because even before he was born, Avram Avinu was told to give his child a Brit. Chok Bishero Sam. He placed in his flesh a chok, a statue of a mitzvah of milah. Betzayetzav and his children of Yitzchak chatam. He sealed. He gave them the seal. Beot brit kodesh with this sign of the holy covenant. Alkein b'schazot kelchai the living Hashem chelkenu our portion. Some say tzureinu also. Tzavei lehatzil yididut sheereinu mishachat command. To save Yididut She'erenu, Mishachat, Liman Briso Asher Sam Bivsorenu. To save uh, our Yididut relative from destruction because of the Brit which he placed in our Basar. We're asking that Hashem should save this child from death. Okay? Baruch Atah Hashem, Koret Habirit. Okay? Hamalat Gerim Omer, of course it's more min hagim that we add more things than we give the shame. Hamalat Gerim Omer, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elkinu Mechadam, Asher Kedishanu, Mitzvah Tzivanu, Ala Mila, V'amvarech Omer, Asher Kedishanu, B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu, Lamul Et Hagerim. U'latif Mehem Dam Berit. That's the end of the Baruch Atah Hashem. Um, I think it's part of the bracha. Long bracha. The question is, what type of mitzvah is this? What do you mean? I said tzivonu. Kishon mitzvah tzivonu lo mulus hagerim. I was never commanded to give a brit to this ger. What mitzvah? I have to make you into a ger. I was commanded to make you into a ger. Um, some say it's the mitzvah of avas hager. Because you can't leave a ger without a milo. Meaning to say, there's a mitzvah of Avas Hager to make him to a, a ger when he deserves to become a ger. Okay? Now why do we mention Atafas Dam Brit in this bracha? Because many gerim come with a brit milah already. So it's only Atafas Dam Brit. Okay. Now what do you do by a, an Eved Kenani? Meaning, the, which is the, the father of the, who is the Eved, the owner, Omer, Because without the Dam Brit, the there wouldn't be any... Le- I, I should have made the big deal about it last time. There's no heaven, there's no earth, there's no science, there's no world. Baruch Atah Hashem. Blessed are you Hashem. Koret Haberit. Who has cut this covenant with us. Hadron Aloch Rabbi Yezer de Milo. We have a Milo Bizmano. Hasaka Baruch.